Hey Chopper, this viewer's not subscribed. <coughs> this video is sponsored by Card Market, Europe's largest online marketplace for trading card games. This video is sponsored by Sleeve Chief. Do, 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 do you have it? Guts! Sleeve Chief is releasing their Black Warrior collection. It includes their Berserk full 3D metal deck box, the Endless War Bloody Dark Art Cloth Playmat, the Berserk Dark Art Hollow Sleeves, Darkest Night Dark Art Border Sleeves. All of this is out now on their website. And as always, use code card Kaizoku for 5% off your order. And if enough of you use my promo code, maybe I'll start reading Berserk. I know I should, but I'm lazy. All right, it's time for the Blue Doflamingo deck breakdown. Haven't done a deck breakdown in a while. But yeah, let's jump right into things. So. Ludo Flamingo, it's going to be like the meta deck in 09 in Japan. And technically, it's going to be meta from OP 8.5 when the starter decks come out in October for us as well. Because this deck does not run any 09 cards at all, it's a full power right out of the gate. There is no way to like play OP 8.5 in the sim at the moment as I'm recording this deck breakdown. So hope you don't mind. Some of these matches will feature decks that run 09 cards, but you still get to see the full power of the deck. And yeah, since he kind of is the same deck into 09, I guess I'll just repost this video once OP09 comes out. So yeah, let's take a look at the leader. So Blue Do Flamingo, 5 life leader, 5,000 power, way back from OP01. His leader ability reads, Dawn times 2 when attacking if you pay 1 Dawn. Reveal the top card of your deck. If that card is a 7 Warlords of the Sea type character with a cost of 4 or less, you can play that card rested. So yeah, it's a strong swarming leader ability. You get a body out for basically 3 Dawn. You're paying 3 Dawn to play a four drop and essentially uh, draw you a card, right? Because it's coming from the top of your deck. It's not coming from your hand. Everything in your hand, you get to keep in your hand. And then there's cards in the deck that utilize cards in your hand as well. So there's a lot of synergy built into the deck. And then with the inclusion of the new starter deck, he just becomes turbo busted, turbo able to swarm, turbo like value machine. But enough hyping it up. We'll just go over the deck. Yeah. So here's the list. Bam. So I'm a little hyper today, but yeah. <laughs> so for EB01 Edward Weevil, it's a four drop 6k power, no counter. And on play, you just draw a card. It's a seven Wolves of the Sea type character. So you can cheat it up with your leader ability. It, it's even giving you plus one card on top of it being a free card to play from the top of your deck already. So double value there. For OP01 Perona, one cost 2k power, 1k counter on play. Look at the top five cards of your deck and then return them to the top or bottom of your deck in any order. Most of the time, like 99% of the time, you're going to pick to put it back on top because what you can do is rearrange the top cards of your deck so that you know what's on top of your deck when you're using your leader ability. Not that it's like hard to whiff with this deck already because yeah, there's so many seven rollers of the C type cards now, but Prona lets you hit the ones that you want to see when you want to see it, right? There's some that interact with your opponent's board. There's some that interact with cards in your hand that you kind of want at the correct timings. And it lets you control cards that you want to draw versus cards that you want to cheat out with your leader ability too. For OP02, Gekko Moria. This is just the vanilla efficient stat line to cheat out with your leader ability. Two OP06 Charlotte Pudding, four cost 4k power. On play, your opponent returns all the cards in their hand and then they shuffle it back into their deck and draw a new hand of five cards. So yeah, in the current meta, there's a lot of decks that go very huge in hand size, especially with you attacking 7k early on to cheat out a bunch of bodies. They'll, they'll more often than not take cards to hand and then you play pudding and then they essentially like lose cards it goes back into the deck but essentially they don't have access to it anymore if you can land one of these it's really devastating to, to a lot of decks actually like purple luffy is a deck that goes really high in hand count black yellow luffy as well bonnie cards like that or decks like that i mean but we do only run it as a two of because it's just just a tech card there are decks that this is a dead card against but if you do feel like your local meta is very like big hand heavy you could just increase the numbers of this pudding as well but again she is not a seven rollers of the sea type character so do take note of that it's purely a tech card for op07 crocodile four cost 5k power 2k counter so it's both a 2k counter and like a body you can cheat out that can attack because 5k is the perfect stat line for this kind of deck then on play if you pay a dawn you can return up to one two cost or lower character to its owner's hand so if you want to bounce like your Peronas back to hand or like there's a buggy that we're going to go over later, that's a 2k counter that can rearrange the top cards of your deck. These are cards that you can bounce back to your hand and then use them as counter or rearrange your, your top cards of your deck again. And also you can get rid of your opponent's like two cost blockers, like the Rosinantes or something. You can get rid of that. Four OP07 Jinbei, four cost 5k power, 1k counter on play, play up to one four cost or lower seven rollers of the C type character card other than a Jinbei from your hand. So this is one of the priority guys that you want to cheat out with your leader ability. It lets you swarm like no other. You're already getting value out of your leader ability, but then Jinbei lets you play another character on top of that for free. And he himself is a 5k attacker, so that's great for, for the intents and purposes of this deck. 
And then you'll want to aim for like a 6k body that you cheat out with this Jinbei just to get the most value. So, so that's cards like that Edward Weevil that we went over earlier. So he comes out as a 6k, uh, unrested by the way. And then you draw a card on top of that. And yeah, basically he's even great to play from your hand too. You don't have the leader ability into a Jinbei. In the late game when you're at 8 dawn, you can like refill your board uh, with like a well-timed like Gekko Moria into Jinbei from Trash to replay Jinbei to play out another character. 4 OP07 Sengoku, 1 cost 2k power. So on play, it's uh, it's a look at top 5 searcher for the 7 wallers of the C type. You add it to your hand, put the remaining on the bottom of your deck in any order. This just helps with the consistency of finding the piece that you need when you need it. It's a flexible like 1 dawn play when you have dawn to spare. And he even has counter so it's never a dead card in hand. But he himself is not a 7 wallers of the C type card, so do take note of that. 4 starter deck 3, Gekko Moria. 4 cost 5k power. On play, add up to 1 7 lords of the C type or Thriller Bark Pirates type character with a cost of 4 or less other than Gekko Moria from your trash to your hand. So this is just a way to cheat out a body and also recycle, right? The card comes back to your hand. You'll most likely take either a Jinbei or a 2k counter for more defense, which is essentially like drawing a card, right? So it's like Weevil. You cheat out a body, you draw a card, you're like super ahead in like card advantage this way. 4 starter deck 3, Drakul Mihawk. 4 cost, 5k power, 2k counter. And then Dawn times 1 when attacking, you can draw 2 cards and charge 2 cards from your hand. So yeah, just another flexible 2k counter option that is an attacking body that you can interact with your leader ability and that Jinbei and stuff like that. And then his uh, card effect isn't too bad either, right? In the late game, if you have a bunch of Weevils in your hand that are like clogging up the uh, space because they don't have counter, you could cycle them out. You cycle two of them out, so it, a lot of utility. And, but it's not like an imperative effect. It's just a nice to have. And yeah, we're glad to have it. <laughs> 4 starter deck 17, Trafalgar Law. 4 cost 5k power. 1k counter on play. You may return one of your characters to its owner's hand. And if you do this, if your leader has a 7 wallers of the C type, return up to 1 4 cost or lower character to its owner's hand. So this is a new inclusion from the starter decks and it's like a pretty crazy like value play on your early turns. If you cheat this out on your 3 dawn turn, whatever your opponent played for... It would have been 2 dawn, right? So yeah, they'll have to bounce it back to hand. But the most value is when you play this on your 5 dawn turn because yeah, your opponent would have just played a 4 drop. So you play out Law, you bounce the Perona or the Buggy that you played earlier to rearrange the top cards of your deck. And then that lets you get rid of whatever 4 drop they just played. It just undid a turn of dawn for them. They gained like no advantage from it. I don't know what they were thinking given removal to Doflamingo even though he's already cheating out so many bodies and drawing cards. Now he also gets rid of something on board. Pretty insane. 4 starter deck 17, Buggy. So yeah, this is the other top deck rearranger that we have now in addition to Perona. And he's also a 2k counter, so he's like incredible utility. He only looks at the top three though, but yeah, it's more than enough for us. And it interacts really well with the Trafalgar Law that we just went over. 4 starter deck 17, Boa Hancock, 4 cost 6k power, blocker, and then on play, look at the top three cards of your deck, place them back in any order on top or the bottom of your deck, and then give up to one of your 7 wallers of the C-type leaders or characters, one of your Rested Dawn. So this is another power card from the starter deck. This Boa lets you on your 6th Dawn turn use your leader ability, right? Because you're paying 4 Dawn for her. You put a rested Dawn on your leader. You have 2 leftover Dawn. Attach another Dawn to your leader. You have your leader ability active with the 1 active Dawn remaining to activate it when you attack. And then yeah, Boa herself looks at the top 3 so you can rearrange and then guarantee what you're going to play out with your leader ability. It's just does everything that our deck wants and she herself is a blocker which is incredible utility for the deck everything else is an attacker boa can block and attack because she has a 6k stat line too it's a vanilla stat line the only downside is she has no counter but it more than makes up for like everything everything else she can do for our deck right she fills every single other role besides like removal but we'll take what we can get this is one of the best cards to play and then one thing i want to know is if you do cheat out uh, boa hancock with your leader ability when you do play her out, you still can put the rest of it down on your leader. So it could make you attack for 8k instead of 7k. So just FYI on that kind of uh, synergy interaction. But also do note, you can put that on a 7 roller step character too. So you don't have to swing for 8. You could split it up a little differently. 2 OP04 Gum Gum Red Rock. 6 cost on main. You can bottom deck any character on your opponent's board regardless of cost. And then trigger, you can bottom deck a 4 cost on board. So yeah, this is just our like removal for your opponent's late game that we can't deal with because all of our bodies are like 5k's and 6k's. I run it as a 2 of, uh, this ratio could change depending on your meta. So don't take this 2 count as gospel. You're going to have to adjust based on, on the decks that you think you're going to face. 1 OP06, Gravity Blade, Raging Tiger. I don't know why this name always messes me up. But yeah, 7 cost event. On main, you can place 2 of your opponent's 6 cost or less characters in any order on the bottom of the deck. Then on trigger, you can place up to one five cost or less character on the bottom of its owner's deck. So yeah, this is kind of like red rock, but uh, it lets you go wide, right? You can get rid of two things. Six drop or lower, it's going to hit a lot of key targets. 
especially against decks like uh, Luchi and then like Purple Luffy and then like Black Yellow Luffy as well. A lot of their key pieces and blockers are like five, five drops. But again, the ratio of this is not set in stone. If you're facing more Black Yellow Luffy than you would like to handle in, in your meta, you could increase the count of this and then decrease the count of Red Rock. And lastly, one OP07 Perfume Femur. Two cost event on main up to one of your seven lords of the sea type leaders or characters gets plus 2k power during this turn. So two dawn to buff something for 2k, it's like pretty much free, right? It's free power. And then your opponent can't activate blocker when that selected card attacks. So it's unblockable. That's better than Diablo Jom actually. Diablo Jom, you don't get that one done that you pay for it back. So you attack 14k max with Diablo Jom. With Perfume Femur, you can attack for 15 with your leader. And then on trigger, it draws a card too. So it's not even bad in that regard. It's better than Diablo Jom in every regard. Why isn't this a red card? I don't know. But we run it as a one of. It can be searched with Sengoku. And you can manipulate the top cards of your deck with Perona or Boa Hancock or Buggy so that you do draw into this at some point. But again, also variable in count. You could run it up to, I think a max of two would make sense if you feel like you're in a blocker heavy meta. I wouldn't go higher than two personally. For starting hands, you do actually have quite a lot of options. That's why this deck is so strong too. You can start with pretty much any hand. So you'll want Peronas, of course, just to rearrange the top cards of your deck on your first turn when you can't really do anything else or even attack or even use your leader ability at this point. Pudding is also good to have early on because as the game gets uh, to the late stages of the game, they would have countered more often and then have less cards in hand. When you're attacking for 7k early on, that's when they are most likely to take cards to, to hand from life. So that's when Pudding can get you the most value. Even sometimes they'll take like a 5k if they're a 5 life leader because they want more cards in hand. So Pudding is most devastating in the beginning stages of the game. Then of course Jinbei. Jinbei is a uh, card that you can even opt to play on your 4 or 5 down turn and not use your leader ability because he does guarantee you to cheat two bodies out. It just applies so much pressure for your deck. And then Sengoku is something you can play on your 1 or 2 down turn. It just helps you find your Jinbeis or something or even like your Boa Hancocks or your Laws. Speaking of Law, one of the best early game plays as well, right? We mentioned it earlier where they can bounce your opponent's 4 drop on their 4 down turn. It totally negates what they just did. They basically only attacked you for 5k for the turn. So a lot of value generated with this law. And it lets you like bounce your, your Peronas and your Buggies back to hand to counter later on too. And then yeah, Buggy, for the same reasons that we want Perona in opening hand, this Buggy is like a emergency Perona, right? It's two cards less, but does the same thing, which will find you what you need most of the time. And then Boa, Boa is a way on your sixth on turn to use your leader ability. It increases the tempo if you're going even. And even going odds, it's still great too. Right? She just does everything that our deck wants. It's an attacker, it can rearrange the top, and it gives you a Dawn to use with your leader ability. And it's an elevated 6k stat line. So yeah, perfect early game card. So that's the Doflamingo deck. It's pretty standard. I don't think people deviate too much from this list. Some people try to run that Blackbeard card. This one here. The 2 drop 3k that lets you like uh, put a card from your hand back on top of your deck. And then you could put 2 rested Dawn on your leader to guarantee. Well, you're basically cheating out uh, a 4 drop from your hand, right? But I kind of like the deck without him. You could try him out. I don't think he's a bad option at all. And then yeah, you might want to mess with the ratios a bit. If you want to run more like removal in the form of Red Rock or, or Gravity Blades, you could cut out like the Vanilla Geckos. You could run it as a two of only maybe, or, or even cut some of the Sengokus out too. And then you could run more Puddings if you feel like you need it. But everything else I think is pretty core, like the Weevils. Actually, even the Weevils, you could cut to three or two. But yeah, Jinbei is for sure and uh, four of, Boa is a four of. I consider Law a 4 of because right now there's a lot of decks that you can utilize that bounce the 4 drop against. So yeah, that is the Doflamingo deck for OP 8.5 and probably OP 09. The only things I could imagine changing is just the tech cards to tech against whatever is popular in the meta. But yeah, it is going to be a tier 1 deck now, S tier deck. Finally, Doflamingo gets this chance to shine. What is this like? <laughs> 8 sets later. <laughs> and honestly, I don't, I don't think they'll ever ban this leader or any cards in this deck. It's frustrating to play against, but it's not like uh, broken or I don't know. Maybe it is broken, but I don't know. I feel like Luchi at least does strong into this deck, but that was also true with Red Purple Law. Luchi was getting against Red Purple Law, so I don't know. But for now, at least for now, 8.5 and OP09, this guy is going to be allowed, not banned. So so get your games in with this guy while you can, I guess. And even though, yeah, I, I admit he's a strong deck, but I still don't really like this deck. I don't know if I don't like the deck or if I just don't like Doflamingo as a character. I think it's more that. But I'll try not to let my personal bias against the character Doflamingo get in the way of this deck itself. I just wish that it was a different leader. If it was like a Bo Hancock leader for the Seven Warlords of the Seat archetype, I guess I'm just going to have to uh, suck it up and deal with it. 
But anyway, yeah, I still have fun with the deck, so don't worry. It's not going to be all negative in the rest of the matches in this video, so don't worry about that. So yeah, enjoy the matches. Then uh, let me know what you guys think of Doflamingo. Like, comment, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I'm going to say this in the middle of the video now because I usually say this at the end. And like, I think I don't think most of you watch to the end anyway. So yeah, I hate Doflamingo. We have Doflamingo versus Black Yellow Luffy. I have literally never played this matchup before. So I don't even know who is strong in this. I guess I'll find out. Um, Let's Mulligan. Okay, yeah, having Prona is good. So we'll play that. So next turn we're going to Leader Ability. So let's uh, Leader Ability into a Boa. It seems like a good thing to do. So we'll draw this, leader ability that, cheat out. No, no cheating out. This gets cheated out and then we'll draw Perona. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. We'll pass. Yeah, I'm regaining my Doflamingo legs. I haven't played them in a while. Especially with all these new tools. So Garp out. Now, do I want to get them low? I'm going to have Perfume Fumer, right? They're not going to expect it. Okay, they're Maki knowing. So if they're going to make themselves low, I'm, I might as well make them even lower. Yeah, I'll learn if that's the right thing to do in, in this matchup here, in this specific match. And then you guys can tell me in the comments. <laughs> okay, so they pass and I will attack 7, play out Boa. And then I'll leave that as it is. And then I'll give Rusted Dawn to my leader. I take, we will pass. Okay, so they can Egghead Luffy from now. That could kill my boa. And I'm hoping they're not expecting me to have Perfume Femur. So I can hit them with an unblockable. I wish I had some Jinbei's though. That'd be pretty sweet if I did. No Jinbei, no life. You know, 6 at boa, right? 7? 8? 9? 9 at boa. The slowest way to put the Dawn out. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could add that. Okay, we get uh, Perona. We'll play out. I should I should really put in this board, right? What's on top again? It's like a croc, right? Should I just use this turn to pudding? I think so. Yeah, so we'll put in first because I have a feeling they're going to counter 2k if I attack for 6. But yeah, we're going to attack for 6. We ripped at least 2 cards out. And then whatever you search with Garp, what did you search? I know in the real life situation I can't look up like a card log to, to, to remember. Oh, he whiffed on it. Okay. So maybe I shuffled his hand to something that he wanted. He did counter two in the end anyway. But yeah, that's three cards now out of his hand. The 2k and the two cards that I made him return back to the deck. So feeling pretty good. Another Garp. You're going to whiff this one too? Oh yeah, I kind of remember the hover cards for you guys to like pause and read if you're a new player. Okay, they pick up a five cost Sabo to play him out. Here, I'm going to go through every card that's on board. You can stop to read if you don't know what some of these cards do. Yeah, you get it? Got it? Capiche? Capouche? Kadoosh? Wait, can I say that? Should I censor that? Okay, what did they drop? So, big Luffy, small Luffy, five at me. Yeah, I could use some cards. We do get the red rock trigger. Okay, buy. Oh, wait, four cost? Dang, I thought it was five. That's Gravity Blade, huh? Whoops. I should have saved that for the Gecko Moria. I triggered it by accident. I could have sworn this was five, but it, it's Gravity Blade. That's five. Yeah, again, as I said, I'm regaining my legs with Doflamingo. Now I know until I forget again because I don't like playing this deck. Ooh, I shouldn't have admitted that. Alrighty, uh, we will Boa here. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I could bounce Perona back to hand. No, I, I think I want just Statline. Statline is more important. Then rest it down leader. Another down one on leader. I'm gonna do seven at lead and cheat out to Gecko. I should have just done eight because I can't attack with the pudding. Oh, they block with the Sabo. Okay. Maybe I can utilize pudding after all. Now, will they counter two? Do they want to stay healthy? They do. This is gonna make a very easy late game for me. So five at leader with pudding. That means they don't have a Gecko Moria in hand, and then I've got I got rid of a lot of their, their two cost brothers, right? Okay, so they have Sabo and Luffy, and then they have the five cost. So they have that loop going at least once. And I'm going to assume they have a Gecko in hand. If they play Egghead Luffy, this is going to kill our blocker. Yep. And then they drew a card. So this turn, they just clear board. That, that's all they really want to do here. It's eight at Gecko. 
I think I will save Gecko because he's 6k base. Yep. Okay, we'll counter 2 and uh, 1. Alright, I... Uh, the next card is another Croc, which I don't think I want. So I think I will play Perona. Um, so we could do Weevil and then draw a Law. Bounce, I don't know, Perona back to hand. Wait, so I'm cheating out the Weevil to draw a Law. No, I want to draw a 2k. Like that. Then next turn, I would draw Perona, cheat out Croc. Or cheat out Law. Yeah, yeah, yeah like the sound of that we do seven at lead here leader ability out the weevil and draw maybe i can even femur him if he doesn't expect it three cards in hand but i don't know what they are right yeah i don't know what these cards are everything that he searches is out or in the discard he took the seven okay another seven from gecko he took that so if I femur here, it's only a 6k. No, it's 8k, right? Femur the 8k, they have to counter two cards. Oh, but she's not a... Oh, she's not a 7 warlord. I should have attacked with her first. Whoops. Whoops. Okay, we'll just do 8 and then they'll block with Sabo. My bad. So the leader ability loop here. Dang. Why aren't you a 7 Warlord's Pudding? Spoilers. Hit 2 down leader. I hope it's not a Gecko. I hope they don't have a Gecko, but they've drawn like 3 cards since. So, oh, 2 Sabos. Okay. So I think we can Femur here, because I think he's going to pop both of them. Does he keep one of them? We'll see if he has the foresight to play around Femur. Okay, he pops both, so I think we got it, right? There's no way he can defend this with the... Uh, Three cards in hand. So yeah, Pudding is devastating in this matchup. Right, he probably kept a really good hand and then I messed up his mojo with this Pudding. Yeah, I really want to like this deck. I just wish it was any character but Doflamingo. Be any other blue character. I just don't like Doflamingo as a, as a person, you know? But the deck is cool. Right? If it's a 7 Warlords themed deck, why couldn't it have been Boa? Why, did, why, why does Boa have to have her like Amazon Lily stuff? Okay, so they clear some of my board. We'll just femur here. Call Active Dawn and then 15 at lead. 3 cards means that's 6k max. So if, if it is all 2k's, they do live. No, no they don't. 9 plus 6 is 15, so yeah. I keep thinking Diablo Jump, 14. But for Fem Femur, is, you can attack for the full 15. There's a two, there's a two, and then a two, and it's not enough. Oh, one. Okay, they didn't have the counter anyway. We got it. We won't rematch. Nope, okay, bite. We have Doflamingo versus Carrot. Actually, Carrot might be good against me, right? Because she can, she can like, stun a lot of my stuff, but uh, Gravity Blade's gonna help get rid of their Carrots. So we'll play Perona to start. Right, next turn, we're going to draw Buggy, and then we're going to cheat out uh, Boa. And then we'll draw Perona, and then... Yeah, that looks good. We'll pass. They play Wanda, the Searcher. Alright, you can read what the Carrot does. That's what I do now, I show all the cards as, I, as they're being played. Even though, I'm pretty sure half this video, I'm not going to do that. But from now, I am. Alright, we'll do 7 at lead, cheat out the boa, and then we'll keep this because I like it. Then we'll... I probably shouldn't have kept it actually, but whatever. Then we'll put Rusted Dawn leader to attack for 8. Right, because I want Jinbei's. Jinbei's is what makes my deck so, like, so high pressure. Or else I'm just going to develop a lot of boas here and have a lot of rearrangers. So 2 at my Perona, sure. The 4 Dawn is what? Some mink that I don't know. Consulot? Uh, Barto, you're not a mink, but he totally looks like he could be. Kind of looks like a mouse here, doesn't he? Six at my boa. I will counter. Oh, boa doesn't have counter. Okay, we'll counter two. All right, this is like my my fifth Doflamingo game of the day, and I just learned that boa Cancroc doesn't have any counter. Okay, so I put a hit on as my next uh, card on life, right? 
should I do seven eight? Was it a croc? Yeah, it was a croc. And we won't use his ability because I don't want to bounce anything that he has. It took. I think next card is a Sengoku, right? Which I, I kinda. Yeah, I'll keep that on top. Electrical Luna taps my boa, okay? So I have nothing to do. I guess we'll just play Perona, set up. Okay, we start getting Jinbei's. So Jinbei into Gecko is good. I think I want to get the bigger. No, let's get cards in hand. And then we'll draw into Gecko and then play another Jinbei, right? Right, draw, leader ability, cheat, draw, leader ability. Yeah, sounds good. We'll pass. Okay, so the electrical Luna again? Oh, no, wait, the leader can just tap my my Perona. Right, I forgot what their leader ability did. They can just tap whenever. So there's the carrot out. If they have a second threat, then I'll start gravity blading. So two at my Perona again, sure. Six at my croc. We'll save him. Okay, I haven't taken any life because he's controlling me. Okay, so I can do Boa. We'll keep that. Rest it down leader, second down leader, and then we'll do seven at lead, cheat out Jinbei into another Boa. And then we'll Oh right. Jinbei doesn't play from life. Or from the top of the deck. He plays from my hand. So I want to draw. And then cheat it out with Jinbei. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forgot about that. Oh, and I can put Rested Dawn into Croc here. Take the seven. Here's another seven. Probably all thought I was crazy. Like, how are you going to play that Gekko Mori from your deck <laughs> with the Jinbei? Okay, so they count in three here. We will pass. Okay, so they tap a Boa. This would be a good Electrical Luna turn if they have it. And I'll start letting some stuff die because I do need board space. So for 9 Dawn, I could do Tiger, but then I can't leader ability. We'll see if he plays anything that we have to worry about. He does run Shanks. That's not going to affect us too much because we, we go wide. Okay, 6 at Croc. I don't have the counter. And then they froze one of my Boas. I guess I could have blocked counter 1. 5 at Jinbei. Yeah, we'll just block. And then, then they're going to Luna, and then I'm dumb for, for blocking with Boa. Oh, and second carrot. Huh, maybe I Raging Tiger here instead. They could do like 7 with Barto, or 5 with Wanda here, with the remaining Dawn. Let's see. So I'm going to draw Gecko, 7 at Boa. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, we'll play two things out, so we'll hold off on the Gravity Blade. Right? But it would be a good idea to tiger now. Hmm. Because if I do this, I, I really can't do much else with the turn. Yeah, we'll, we'll tiger. Bottom deck, bottom deck. Hopefully it'll be worth it. So 6 at Barto. They take, and then 6 at lead. So we're going to draw our Jinbei, and then we have a vanilla gecko on top. I guess we could Sengoku. To, oh no, that, that searches. It doesn't rearrange. So I can play out Jinbei into Gekko. Right, 5 at Jinbei. Okay, we're saving our Jinbei. I want to ping some more. Hopefully we can have a full board of characters to attack with this time. We got rid of two carrots. And the third one's in their discard, so they only got one more in their deck. We don't have to worry about Electrical Luna. That's annoying. They probably run a two of at, at least. Okay, they play uh, 09 Doflamingo, so it's not a 8.5 versus 8.5 match anymore. So he's just a blocker for all intents and purposes. They did Luna in the end. Okay, that is annoying. So we get Jinbei into Moria to bring back a Boa. Yeah, we'll do that. So Jinbei into Moria, bring back a Boa. We can play Boa out and leader ability. Into a Vanilla Gecko. Yeah, I like it. Boom. You want to keep my characters dressed in? I'll just replace them. <laughs> okay, they block with Doflamingo at counter two. Right, we'll pass. So we have three that are untapped at least that they can't really... Oh, they can tap one with their leader ability, but then I'll have two at least that can attack. If they have a way to like keep everything rested, that is. So they didn't rest my blocker. 
And I forgot this gecko comes out rested anyway. So they swung two at Boa for fun. I have zero cards in hand, so bye bye Boa. They could do Dawn on Leader, kill a Boa, and then play Shanks to kill Gecko Moria. Why that me? Interesting. He has a way to keep both of these down. Okay, 10 cost of Flamingo gets my, gets my leader too. Gots my leader too. Okay, Femur. Hmm. I think I just try to get him to zero. So here is 10 at lead. They take. They go to zero. Femur is going to win me the game. Here's another 10 at lead. They block. But they save him. Interesting. Oh, he died anyway. What the heck? <laughs> Huh? <laughs> you block countered four. He plays Zo. I think I still had it, even if he didn't miss miss counter that. But I have four life. There's no way he was gonna finish me, and then I just go super wide. He would have had four cards, right? So if I do a bunch of sevens, it rips a bunch of cards out of his hand. So they attack my boa. Here's what uh, Doflamingo does, by the way. Here's what Zo does, by the way. I don't even know, but I don't think it matters since they got it so late. So six, six at Gecko, sure. I don't know, maybe they have another Electrical Luna. Five at Jinbei, we'll save them. Okay, they tap, had a Pedro blocker. All right, so seven Gecko, he blocks or takes, doesn't matter. Okay, they take it, well, Femur, and we got it. Okay, bye. We have Doflamingo versus Smoker. He should be 8.5, right? I don't think he gets anything in 09. We'll go first. So it's a true 8.5 versus 8.5 match here. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. Maybe Pudding is good. We'll play out Buggy though. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna draw Buggy, then cheat out Jinbei into Boa. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I do like the sound of that. If I repeat things, it, it fills the dead space, the dead air. So, sorry, excuse me for that. So, brand new. Let's them draw one, discard two. So, they discarded Smoker, Hamapo, and they picked up Tashigi. Okay, uh, let's cheat out Jinbei here. We will cheat out a Boa for us. Then, I want to draw Buggy and then cheat out Law to bounce whatever four drop they play next turn, hopefully. Yeah, and then we'll Boa give Leader another one Dawn. So they took the eight, we'll pass. Oh, here's what Smoker does, by the way. You probably know what my cards do, right? I'm don't I don't think I'm gonna put this as the first match in the video. If I do, then my bad. <laughs> Five at my Jinbei will just block. Yeah, they're playing a four drop that we can bounce back to hand, looks like. Four cost Kuzan, I'm guessing. What else could Smoker run? The new Tishigi is like a five drop, I believe. Oh Borsa, okay, that's good. That's good. Good. Okay, we'll do seven at lead. Cheat out this law. Bounce buggy back to hand. Bounce their borsa back to hand. It's so devastating. They took. Okay, boa six. We're setting up their hand for a pretty nasty pudding next turn too. So they counter two, another seven. I hope they take this one. If they counter it, it makes okay at yeah, nine. So it's gonna be a very devastating pudding for them next turn. I'm guessing. One card max this turn, they're gonna play Tashigi, right? To kill my Boa. Then I'll rip, what is it, like four cards out of their hand? It's gonna be pretty crazy. Yeah, here's Tashigi. It's a new card. You can read what she do. It's like Smoker's like starter deck 14 Sanji. In essence. It even has the cost reduction part built in too. So seven at Jinbei. Sure. And then Tashigi kills Hancock. Nine cards, right? So, uh, pudding. And then I forgot what's on top of my life, of my deck. So I'm going to do a blind leader ability here. It was Jinbei, perfect. <laughs> Into Weevil. I'm pretty sure I saw that before, I just forgot what it was. And I'm having to commentate at the same time, it's hard. Right, cut me some slack, so they took. Law for five. Counter one, we'll pass. I don't know, how do you guys memorize the Doflamingo cards? When you're playing like 10 matches in a tournament, doesn't it all kind of blend together? I don't want to take notes, that's kind of cheating. Right, I believe it's like officially cheating in the English version of the game. I don't know if the Japanese version you can do that or not. So 6 at Jinbei, counter 2. 
Okay, I think from this point, I don't know what's on top, so I do have to play a buggy out. So five at Jinbei, we will counter two, I guess. I don't have any other 1Ks. Do I have a good chance to Gravity Blade, if whatever they play here? So Tushigi, maybe a second uh, five cost Tushigi here. Oh, T-Bone. I mean, no, nah, I think I just go for game. Oh yeah, just concedes. <laughs> ha ha ha. And he left, ha ha ha. Do Flamingo is too strong. Bye. No, Do Flamingo versus Katakuri. Katakuri? Or is AFK? AF Kori? No, he's not. Ooh, I like this hand. Three Peronas. That's pretty crazy, right? What I want is to bounce their Pedro Spero back to hand with the law. So let's play Perona and get a law. Nope, no law. Then second best case scenario here. We'll take a 2k and then we'll cheat out to Boa. Gecko Boa. Draw. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. Okay, so two dawn turn. Could be a pudding, could be a pass. What are your bets? I think it's a pass. You have a few seconds to lock in your... It was a pass, all right. They they passed the turn quicker than I expected, so I win. So we'll cheat out a boa here, and then we'll just keep this, right? Actually, let's cheat out the 6k. No, no, I'm going to play out Jinbei that turn. Yeah, like that. So they'll take the 7. I could have put Don on leader to make it an 8, but I think he takes it either way. If he counters for 3, that's my my bad. I misclicked as I was talking. This should be an 8k, because Boa can put Rested Don on leader. He took it, so yeah. It did not matter in the end. Inconsequential. Okay, they got a Brulee trigger and they're going to look at my life. They put it on the bottom. Ooh, I wonder what it is. I guess we'll never find out because we're never going to get that low. Ooh, cocky. Too cocky. So cocky that I almost like misspoke that sentence and <laughs> but it sounded really dumb. And I, I even almost misspoke trying to explain that. So they did play out Peros Pero and then they're going to swing with their leader. Here's what his leader really does. If you're going to wonder why it's 7k even though he has one Dawn attached. So 7 at 6. I have a 2k and I will counter for 2k. Because 6 is a good stat line to protect early on. Oh damn, Cardi's giving like actual advice. Yeah, I do that sometimes. Okay, so... Um, do I want a Jinbei? I guess I could leader ability and then attack 8. But I think I want a Jinbei, you know? Yeah, I do want a Jinbei. So we'll do... Bo um, I'm just scared of like an Onami trigger, you know? Okay, we'll do 7 Boa. Gotta be brave. It took. Okay, they're reading something. It was a Satori? Okay, okay. They discarded an Onami for it. Scary, scary. So fire from lead, do you counter this one? You have to, right? Counter one, we'll play out Jinbur into Croc and then pass. And then I have three Peronas in hand. So I draw Gecko and then I set up Perona to, to lead her ability into something. If I don't want the vanilla Gecko, which I don't think I do. So they do play Nami to kill our blocker, maybe? Yep. And then that means seven at life, which is fine. I'll gladly take this. I need cards in hand. We take it. We get the buggy. So th four rearrangers in hand. Five at us. Yeah, we'll take one more. Sure. Vanilla. Five at us again. Okay, I'm not going to take any more than that. Out of one. Uh, I do have the clear board, right? Play Perona. Find something juicier. Okay, we'll take the... I cheat out the Weevil and then we'll take a Red Rock. Because they're at 8 next turn. So we can get rid of their 7 mom. Then we'll draw... Sengoku, cheat out Gekomoria, and then Femur later on. Sounds good. Okay, we'll do 7 at... Uh, Satori. Cheat out, we will draw. This should kill. Yep, and it does. And we'll do 5 at... Peros Pero. And it'll die because they need something to play next turn. Brulee. Okay, that's not too bad. Five at lead. Huh. Does Katakuri run any of the new starter deck cards besides Brulee? 
did kind of one with the cracker and then we'll do five from Perona. right yeah this this is just like one of the best 2ks right you get additional effect to look at my life and then you get it back in hand anyway so they took the five from my Perona. Um, 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 my Perona. another satori trigger that's just less cards in hand i have to deal with i do have to worry about getting low though Okay, they do seven mom. We'll we'll trash a life actually. Okay, seven at us. I think we can take that, right? Should I counter just in case? Because if they ten mom next turn, I'm gonna get rid of. Oh, they're attacking a character. Okay. So if I counter three, one one, I actually can save it. I will save. That's what I'm gonna do. It's one extra attack next turn. Five item, we'll counter one. And then five item, we'll counter one. All right. And we get to stay at two life, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. So we'll red rock the Lin Lin. Then we'll do five at Nami. Nami died. Okay, we'll do five at Satori. Okay, he died. Uh, six at lead. Counter two, we will leader ability here. Cheat out Gecko Moria. They take. We'll pass. And I don't think he has a way to kill me at two life. Because uh, reject is <laughs> still banned, luckily. Kikunojo, that's not going to save him. Katakuri, it's a blocker that might save him. So seven is going to kill one of our characters. Probably a 5k. Was seven at me? Is this smart? We'll take this. I have it, right? Six at lead. Counter two. Okay, six at lead. Counter two. Okay, uh, six at lead. Then we just femur for fun. We took femur. That's all done. 14 for game. We won't rematch. Oh, they left. Okay, bye. We have Doflamingo versus Red Purple Luffy, which is an 09 deck. It's going to be hard to find 8.5 solely matches, but we'll keep this, try it out. All right, I think Law is good early on to bounce their Zoro Juro back to hand. Okay, uh, I guess we'll play Buggy here. Let's set up. We want to draw Perona and then cheat out Jinbei. We'll pass. So we can Jinbei into Law here. And bounced his buggy back to hand. Okay, attack us for six. Yeah, we'll take. Get a red rock trigger. This will be good against this matchup. Okay, Zordro, we're gonna get rid of that guy. So I just go uh, eight at lead, right? Yes. So eight at lead, cheat out Jinbei, play out Law, bounce buggy back, bounce Zordro back. They take. <laughs> Dang, that's such a strong turn. Okay, they play Mr. 2, they're at 6, they cannot use leader ability yet. This could be 8k at Jinbei. But me. We have life to spare, we'll take. Okay, so I can putting them here for, what is this? Two cards? That seems worth it to me. So we will putting. We'll do leader 6. They took that one. Okay, we'll do law 6. Counter two, we'll pass. All right, so now they can leader ability nine beard. They need to play like seven kid or nine beard, yeah. So seven k base is gonna be hard to to deal with. So do I red rock potentially here? So eight at me again. I will counter this one. So two four, yes. I thought I miscounted. I'm not too familiar with the Doflamingo cards just yet. Okay, so I can red rock, and that's pretty much it. But I think I gotta do it. So Red Rock the kid, and then we just swing seven at lead. He does counter one, we'll pass. Then you play something scarier that I wish I had a second Red Rock for. Okay, New Gate hits me for eight again. We'll take. Okay, we have a blocker now, that's good. We'll play out to Boa. Um, if we can bounce their Mr. One back to hand, so we'll put Law on top. Put rested down on leader. Let's see. Eight. I can make another eight. 
Or should I burn the radical beam from his hand? It's probably better. Yeah, we'll burn the radical beam from their hand. So we'll swing at them for 11. Cheat out this law, bounce pudding back to hand, I guess. Then bounce through Mr. Two. Oh, they took it. Okay, we'll pass. Huh, they left the Dawn up just to psych me out. So if they don't have another nine beard or a seven kid, I can ping, ping like crazy, ping town. And I do have quite a lot of counter now. It's like 10 at me. I just block. They play Onami. Okay, they're defensoring up. Maybe I should have just left Boa so I could attack with it. This is a good hand to putting again. <laughs> right, they're at seven. I can get rid of two cards again. Okay, so they're at, at seven cards. Hmm. Like me for six, I will counter for two. Like so. Yeah, I think I should still put in here. So we'll do it. And maybe this will rip the radical beams out of his hand if he has any. Or maybe I just drew him too. <laughs> That's also a possibility there. Okay, we're gonna blind leader ability, I think. Yeah, let's do blind. Okay, we hit. Nice. They block Onami. Okay, we'll do a bunch of 6Ks at him. Burn the remaining cards out of his hand. So there's a 2K. Yeah, hitting him with two puddings now, we ripped like four cards, right? That's four potential counter, and then the 2K. Jinbei, six. They block. Ooh, they block with Queen? Okay, so that means they're not going for like a 10 loopy play. Or maybe they are. <laughs> That's probably what's happening here. 10 we'll take. Then we counter seven, and then. We need to counter a seven, and then a 10, right? I think we have the counter for it. I didn't count. So here's a seven. We'll counter this one. Then we gotta stop a 10 and then we're good. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> There's 10, two, three, four, five, six, and then they concede. Yep. Dang. Am I that familiar with the red, purple, Luffy like loop that I, I just <laughs> know the numbers off the top of my head by heart? Okay, they left. Bye. Cardi Kaizoku.